in the last class we are discussing the cascade control scheme. So, that topic will continue today. Cascade control scheme. To discuss this cascade control scheme, we considered a jacketed CSTR example. So, I am drawing that jacketed CSTR configured with cascade control scheme. First, we measure the reactor temperature using one measuring device, temperature measure, measuring device T T 1. Then this information goes to temperature controller 1, which is the primary controller. The measure temperature T m is compared with its set point value that is T s p. Then the temperature controller output goes to another controller that is T c 2. Coolant temperature is measured by a measuring device namely T T 2 and this measured coolant temperature T C m <coughs> is compared with T C set point supplied by T C 1. Then this control action is implemented through the control valve to manipulate the coolant flow rate F c. Fine. So, this is the cascade control scheme and coolant outlet flow rate is F c with temperature T c. This is cascade control of a jacketed CSTL. We also discussed that this process includes two processes, I mean process 1 and process 2. Process 1 is the reactor excluding the jacket, process 1 is the CSTR excluding the jacket. fine and for the process 1 measurement is reactor temperature T measuring device is T T 1 and controller is T C 1. This is basically the primary controller or master controller. 
fine and process 2 is the jacket process 2 is the jacket measurement involved in process 2 is coolant temperature T c measuring device used is T T 2 and for process 2 the controller is T C 2 which is the secondary controller fine. In the next we will develop the block diagram for this complete closed loop process. In the next we will develop the block diagram for this complete closed loop process. So, process 1 is the reactor excluding jacket. So, we can use one block for this and we consider for process 1 disturbance D 1. Fine. What is the output? Output is the reactor temperature. Output is the reactor temperature T. Fine. So, what we did first? We measure this temperature using T T 1. So, this is T T 1 temperature transmitter which is used as a measuring device. So, first we measure the reactor temperature T. And we denote the measure temperature as T m. Fine. Then this measure temperature is compared with set point value. You see the schematic based on that we are only developing this block diagram. This measure temperature is compared with its set point value that is T suffix S p. Then the error signal goes to first temperature controller that is primary controller denoted by T C 1. Agree? Error signal goes to the primary controller denoted by T C 1. T C 1 output is the set point of coolant temperature. T C 1 output is the set point of coolant temperature T C S P. Fine. It is done in the schematic diagram. I mean we configured the cascade controller in this way. T C 1 output is the coolant temperature set point and this set point value is compared with T C m agree. This T C set point which is supplied by the primary controller is compared with measured coolant temperature measured coolant temperature we obtain 
from T T 2 fine. Then the error signal T C set point minus T C M goes to another controller that is secondary controller T C 2. T C 2 output is implemented through the final control element, this action is implemented through the final control element and this control action goes to process 2 that is the jacket process 2. Secondary controller output enters the process 2 through the final control element. Now, we can consider the disturbance for process 2 denoted by D 2 like for process 1 we consider D 1. Then this output affect process 1 that is nothing but T C and this T C is measured basically using temperature transmitted to understood. This is the block diagram for the closed loop cascade control system of the example jacketed CSTR. I am repeating this process 1 is the reactor excluding jacket. Our control objective is to maintain the reactor temperature at its desired value. So, process 1 output is temperature T that is first measured using T T 1. Measured signal we denote by T suffix m that then T m is compared with its set point value T suffix s p. Output of this comparator is the error signal which goes to primary controller T c 1 and primary controller output is the coolant temperature set point which we represent by T c set point. Now, this set point is compared with measured coolant temperature that is T suffix C m. We measure the coolant temperature by the use of this temperature transmitted to. Now, if we compare T c set point and T m, then we obtain the error signal, I mean the error signal is then goes to the secondary controller T c 2 and T c 2 is T c 2 output is implemented through the control valve and this action goes to the process 2 that is the jacket. We used here the disturbance D 2 for the second process and the output is coolant temperature which affects process 1 and coolant temperatures here we measured by the use of T T 2. So, this is the block diagram this is the closed loop block diagram. Now, cascade controller is usually used when the disturbances are associated with manipulated variable. It is very obvious from this example that the cascade controller takes care of the effect of disturbance 
associated with manipulated variable. Our manipulated variable is F C. So, related disturbance is coolant temperature T C. So, this is almost common that the cascade controller is useful when the disturbances are associated with manipulated variable. This is useful particularly when the disturbances are associated with the manipulated variable. Another situation is when the final control element exhibits nonlinear behavior, when the final control element shows nonlinear behavior. Here final control element is the control valve, fine. So, these are the two common cases where the cascade control scheme is used. So, we developed the cascade control configuration for a jacketed CSTR. We will take another two examples for configuring this cascade control scheme. So, now we will consider distillation top section. We will configure the cascade control scheme for the top section of distillation column. At the top of this tower, a vapor steam namely overhead vapor is condensed by the use of a condenser. The condensed liquid is then accumulated in a reflux drum, this is a reflux drum. A part of this liquid is withdrawn as top product that is distillate and another part is recycled back to the top tray of the column. Fine. This is the top section of a distillation column. The overhead vapor is condensed, then the liquid is accumulated in the reflux drum. A part of this accumulated liquid is withdrawn as the top product namely distillate or distillate product and a fraction is recycled back to the top section of the distillation column. Now, our objective, our control objective is to maintain the top tray temperature. Our control objective is to maintain the top tray temperature. Control objective is to maintain top tray temperature, fine. So, we are considering this is the measured variable, this is the measured variable. Fine. So, this is the top tray, this is the top tray. So, we are first measuring the top tray temperature by the use of temperature measuring device represented by T T.
fine. Then this goes to the primary controller that is T C. Measure temperature is then compared with T set point fine. Primary controller output goes to another controller that is flow controller F C. We measure this flow rate reflux flow rate by the use of one flow measuring device. So, this is the set point of this flow rate and this is the measured value. If we represent this reflux flow rate by R, then this is R measured R m and the primary controller output is R set point. Then this flow controller action is implemented through this control valve fine. So, this is the cascade control configuration for the distillation top section. Our control objective is to maintain the top tray temperature. So, we consider that as the measured variable. This top temperature is measured by the use of one temperature measuring device represented by T T. Then this measure temperature T m goes to the temperature controller in which the measure temperature is compared with its set point value. Then this primary controller calculates the set point value for R represented by R suffix S p and this flow transmitter which is measuring this flow rate as R suffix m. Now, these two are compared in this flow controller F c and that action is implemented through this final control element. So, this is the cascade control scheme for the top section of the distillation column. So, here this is basically the controlled variable top tray temperature is the controlled variable. What is the corresponding manipulated variable? Manipulated variable is reflux rate that is R. Disturbance associated with the manipulated variable disturbance associated with the manipulated variable that is also reflux rate. And which one is the primary controller? Primary controller is the temperature controller denoted by T C and secondary controller is the flow controller denoted by F C. Fine. So, this is the second example for configuring the cascade controls scheme. Next, you will consider another example that is a heat exchanger. Heat 
heat exchanger. Next, we will configure the cascade control scheme for the heat exchanger. This is the cell side of a heat exchanger through which a process stream is flowing. A process stream is flowing. We are interested to maintain the temperature of this process stream T. Fine. So, our control objective is to maintain the temperature of this process stream at its set point value. Now, to maintain the temperature we need one heating medium which flows through the cell side. Possibly I told this is cell side, no this is tube side. Through tube side the process stream is flowing. Our control objective is to maintain the temperature at its set point value. For maintaining the temperature we need a heating medium. So, for this particular case we need a heating medium for maintaining the temperature of the process stream. So, we will consider the process stream temperature as the, as the measured variable. We can measure this temperature by using one temperature measuring device. Then this information is supplied to the primary controller T c. This is a T suffix m. This measured temperature is compared with its set point value T s p. this is basically indicating the steam flow rate. Okay. Uh, then this is the primary controller T c. Primary controller output goes to the secondary controller denoted by F c that is a flow controller and this flow rate is measured the steam flow rate is measured by the use of one flow meter F t. So, this temperature controller gives the set point value of this flow rate and this is the measured flow rate these two are compared I mean this is positive this is negative. Then this flow controller flow control action is implemented through this control valve fine. So, this is the cascade control scheme for the example heat exchanger. <coughs> So, our control objective is temperature and we consider that as a measured variable T t is used to measure the temperature. Then this measurement signal is compared with its set point value 
then the temperature controller calculates the set point value for this flow rate. So, this is the set point value of this flow rate and this is the measured value of this flow rate. They are again compared within this block F c. Then this flow controller calculates action and that action is implemented through this control valve. So, this is the cascade control scheme for a heat exchanger. Here control objective is T. So, this is also the control variable process stream outlet temperature is the control variable. What is the corresponding manipulated variable? Manipulated variable is the steam flow rate. Disturbance associated with the manipulated variable that is also steam flow rate. Then primary controller, primary controller is the T C temperature controller. Which one is the secondary controller? Secondary controller is the flow controller. Fine. So, so far we discussed three examples for configuring the cascade control scheme. One is jacketed CSTR, then distillation top section and finally, a heat exchanger. In all three cases, we observe that the secondary controller is the flow controller. Fine. In all three cases, we observe that the secondary loop is a flow control loop. And it is almost common for all processes. And therefore, we can say that flow control loops are almost always cascaded with other control loops. Therefore, we can say that flow control loops are almost always cascaded with other control loops. Other control loops means this is primary loop basically. Fine. So, next we will discuss the closed loop behavior of cascade controller. Next we will discuss the closed loop behavior of cascade controller. Fine. To discuss this closed loop behavior, we will consider a simplified block diagram. To discuss the closed loop behavior of the cascade controller, we consider a simplified block diagram. Process 1 has the transfer function of say G P 1. We are representing the transfer function of process 1 as G P 1. Previously, we considered the disturbance for process 1 is D 1. Output is say Y. ZM1 is the 
measuring device for process 1. Suppose this is 1. So, this is the comparator set point of y is y set point primary controller transfer function is say z c 1. Another comparator secondary controller transfer function is say g c 2 process 2 transfer function is suppose g p 2 disturbance for process 2 is suppose d 2 and we are considering Z m 2 equal to 1. Fine. Previously, we developed the block diagram for the cascade control system. It is same thing only we have included here the transfer functions and in addition to that we are considering here Z m 1 z m 2 both are equal to 1 and z f 1 z f 2 both are equal to 1. For simplicity we are considering this fine. So, to discuss the closed loop behavior of cascade controller we will consider this block diagram. So, you see this is the primary loop and this is the secondary loop. This is the primary loop and this is the secondary loop. We will consider one by one. First we consider secondary loop. So, what is the open loop transfer function of the secondary loop? How we can represent the open loop transfer function of the secondary loop? open loop transfer function is determined as the multiplication of four individual transfer functions g c, g p, g f, g m. Here for secondary controller g c is g c 2, for secondary loop process has the transfer function g p 2 and g f 2, g m 2 both are 1. Fine. The general expression for open loop transfer function is written as g p, g f, g m, g c. For the secondary loop you see g m 2 and g f 2 they are 1 g m 2 g f 2. So, we can write g secondary g c 2 g p 2 agree. Similarly, can you write the closed loop transfer function for the secondary loop? What will be the closed loop transfer function of the secondary loop? Suppose the output is y prime, 
and the input to the secondary loop is y set point prime. This is the secondary loop, output is y prime and input is y set point prime. So, what will be the expression for the closed loop transfer function? Output is y prime, which is equal to g c 2 z p 2 divided by 1 plus g c 2 z p 2 y set point prime plus 1 divided by 1 plus g c 2 z p 2 d 2 prime. Here g d is 1 fine. So, this is the closed loop transfer function for the secondary loop. Can we include this closed loop transfer function in the block diagram? Yes, we can. Then the block diagram becomes like this. g c 2 z p 2 divided by 1 plus g c 2 z p 2 then the disturbance is added 1 divided by 1 plus g c 2 z p 2 then the process 1 disturbance for process 1 is d 1 output is y. So, previously we considered that the primary controller output is y set point prime and input to the process 1 is y prime. If you consider this equation, I hope this is incorporated in this block, fine. y prime is equal to this, this is this one multiplied by y set point prime plus this and this are added plus this, this is this one multiplied by d 2 fine. Now, for the secondary controller, how you can analyze the stability? I mean what is the characteristics equation which can be used for stability analysis? For secondary controller the characteristics equation we can write as 1 plus z secondary equal to 1 and this yeah equal to 0 and this can be used for stability analysis. So, this is the characteristics equation for the secondary controller. Next, we will consider the primary loop. <coughs> what is the expression of open loop transfer function? of the primary loop. So, z primary which is equal to 
z c 1 z p 1 g c 2 z p 2 divided by 1 plus z c 2 z p 2. Agree? I mentioned that the open loop transfer function is calculated by multiplying 4 individual transfer functions g p, z f, z m, z c. Now, if you consider this block, this block diagram and if you multiply the 4 individual transfer functions, then we obtain the open loop transfer function for the primary loop. Fine. Like the secondary loop, for stability analysis, we need the characteristics equation for primary loop and that we represent as 1 plus z primary equal to 0. This is the characteristics equation for the primary loop, which can be used for stability analysis. Fine. In the next, we will note down few important points. In the cascade control system, there are two control schemes. One is the primary controller, another one is the secondary controller. So, what type of feedback controllers we can use for the primary loop or sec and secondary loop? Usually for primary controller, P, P i and P i d, these three feedback controllers are conventionally used and commonly P i and P i d controllers are used. Commonly P i and P i d controllers are used as primary controller. For secondary controller, P and P i controllers are used and P only is the most common as secondary controller P only controller is the most common because if offset exists under P only controller that is not so important because our control objective is not to maintain the output of the secondary loop. If offset exists under P only controller, that is not so important because our control objective is not to maintain the output of secondary loop. Our control objective is to maintain the output of primary loop. I mean our control ob objective is the measured variable T, not T C. So, this is the first point. So, if you see the characteristics equation for primary and secondary loops, we can say that the dynamics of secondary loop is much faster than the dynamics of primary loop. The dynamics of secondary loop is much faster than the dynamics of primary loop. Fine. You see the 
characteristics equation for primary and secondary loop and you observe the order of the polynomial. With the increase of the order of a system, the response becomes more sluggish. Therefore, we can conclude that the dynamics of this secondary loop is much faster than the dynamics of primary loop. So, based on this can we write the phase lag for secondary loop is less than phase lag for closed primary loop. Based on this comment can we say that phase lag of closed secondary loop is less than the phase lag of closed primary loop. Again can we say the crossover frequency of secondary loop is greater than the crossover frequency of primary loop. If first comment is true then we can make the second comment. If second comment is true then we can say that the crossover frequency of secondary loop is higher than the primary loop. If the third comment is true we can say that we can use higher gains for the secondary loop. higher gains for the secondary controller. <coughs> this is basically K C controller gain. So, we can conclude that for secondary controller we can use higher gain compared to the primary controller fine. In the third note we wish to discuss the cascade controller tuning. So, cascade controller basically involves two controllers one is primary controller and another one is secondary controller. Secondary controller is tuned fast. secondary controller is tuned first and it is tuned tightly as high a proportional gain value as possible. It is tuned tightly means as high a proportional gain value as possible. And for tuning we can use the Cohen Kuhn technique, Jiglar Nichols technique, we can use phase margin gain margin technique, we can use time integral performance criteria. fine. After tuning the secondary controller the primary controller is tuned. The primary controller is tuned. First we tune secondary controller then the primary controller is tuned and for this we usually use frequency response techniques. frequency response techniques like phase margin gain margin method, Jiglar Nichols technique etcetera. So, by this way we tune the cascade controller fine ok thank you.